Hello. How's it going, everyone? Josh here. So this podcast is going to be a little bit different, and that's why I'm doing this announcement. Uh, Recently, I did a talk at the University of Florida to their ad club with my friend and business partner, Jessica Lamison. Uh, We have a a company called Make Ads With Me that is a community that helps young creatives build their portfolios and transition them from from, uh, the learning stage to the job stage. So we went up and did the talk and on the way back, we had about two hours in the car and I thought, you know, this might be a good time for us to talk about the experience because she's done a couple talks before, but this was my first time ever doing uh, a public speaking thing that wasn't like a school presentation. So we talked about it a little bit and a uh, full little, little disclosure here is that the, we recorded while we were driving down the highway and just had the phone sitting on the dashboard. So there is a lot of background noise that I did my best to get rid of, but it's, it's still noticeable. So hopefully the audio is fine. Um, I'm not an audio engineer, so I did the best I could. But I think it has some, some fun stuff, um, and I hope you enjoy listening to it. So I'm not going to ramble anymore, and we'll just jump into it. Hello, everyone. It's me, Josh, and there's no video this time, and also no Pat because I'm in a car. And uh, with me, I have Jessica Lamison, my friend and business partner with Make Ads With Me. And do you want to explain what Make Ads With Me is? Sure. Hey, guys. Um, Make Ads With Me is a community we created uh, for aspiring creatives to connect, find partners, make work together for their portfolios, and ultimately get the support they need to get their foot in the door in the advertising industry. Yeah, so uh, I just we, we just did a talk at uh, UF, the University of Florida, and we have, what, another hour left on our drive. So I figured we could d- get a podcast in, talk a little bit, and just have have this as, like, a thing. Yeah, um, I have to say, I was super impressed by, I didn't want to be, because, you know, I'm a UCF <laughs> grad, and UF is, well, not really, the, they're not the competition as far as they're concerned, but I was really impressed with the group of students. They were all really motivated really into what we were saying, which was nice for us. Yeah. Um, but overall, just, they're all, they're all definitely going to be successful. They'll be our boss one day. (laughs) Right. And this was the first time I had done a talk, um, of, I think of any kind. I don't know if I've done anything because I was doing freelancing for so long. And then, uh, now I'm at a corporate job. So it's, it's really just sit at your desk and get your stuff done. But it was really cool. I I like that, that they, and I hope they weren't just blowing smoke up our ass to say that, like we were saying. Yeah, they, just want, they, they want the networking. But I'm, I'm hoping that they, they actually did get some value from it. And I think we said some things that were interesting. There were questions that both of us got that seemed uh, pointed and not just, oh, favorite color, which we did get that. But. Yeah, one of the things I was actually, and they talked to us about after that I didn't realize was going to hit home as, as much as it did was um, Josh talked a lot about uh, taking care of, like, self-care and not over extending yourself um and i felt like that really drove home hit home for them yeah the um alexa i keep wanting to call her lena i don't know why she could be a lena we're talking about the president of the ad club yeah does kind of look like lena i can see it i guess she could be a lena yeah but she mentioned that there was one person in, in particular who had been running themselves ragged so she was very glad that that i mentioned kind of gave my horror story because I think I mentioned it before and I know you know but I heard I I'm assuming it was tendonitis <coughs> Jess is sick so Sorry, there's guys, some coughs. you're gonna hear some coughing yeah um I'm pretty sure it was tendonitis in both my wrists and it took a year and a half to heal so I I want to prevent as many people as I can from having that happen um so this podcast can serve as another public service announcement of yeah. Don't, I mean, at the end of the day, like, if you're listening and, you know, you do creative work or any type of work, it's not sustainable. Like, you work really hard to do that good work, but it's not sustainable if you run yourself ragged. Yeah, like, if you're dead, you can't enjoy it. Right, it's like they uh, say it in an in, uh, airplane, you have to put your mask on before you save your kid's life. It's kind of like that. 
Yeah, they, they're a bit more elegant with it, but yeah. <laughs> That's how they should say it. Fuck your kids. <laughs> Fuck them. When, when you said airplane, I thought you meant the, the movie. I don't know the movie. I, well, I know that's why I was so confused. I, I was going to say, Dan, you know movies now? Yeah, I don't make movie reference. Have you ever seen Airplane? No. Well, I guess you wouldn't remember it either way. No. It's good. It's like an 80s uh, parody movie okay. with Leslie Nielsen. I think that's his name. I don't know. Or am I, I thinking Naked like, Gun? I don't know who Leslie Nielsen is. I assume it was a woman or Naked Gun is. Well, no. But wait, what? Naked, oh, Naked Gun could be a woman. No, Leslie Woman or Leslie... Jones. You talk about Leslie Jones now? No, you said Leslie something. Leslie, I think it's Leslie Nielsen. And that's a that's a boy. Yeah. That sucks for him. Well, it was a different time. You know, you could name your kids whatever. Oh, you still can. I feel there's, like there's Apple. So now. Yeah, that's not so unfortunate. I fucking love the name Northwest. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Not good. Really? I have a it's really so long good. list of baby names on my phone. Well, okay. And they're all really good. Are, are they, though? They're really good. Yeah, they're really long. Why don't you like Northwest? Because it's, uh, it's not good. It's a great name. Like, would West be the middle name? No, no, I'm talking Kanye West's kid. is called North. Oh. It's Northwest. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know anything about pop culture. Oh, I only know that one because I think the name is so good. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. Why not Southwest? Because that's an airline. Mm-hmm. Plus, like, you want to be going north. Your future's ahead of you. South has connotations of behind you. You're a word person. You yeah. Know this. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, what else did we talk about at um, the talk? I think something that, I, like, I they said they actually, like, wrote stuff down. And I would think what they probably wrote down is a lot of people during talks give a lot of theoretical advice, which is nice, you know, high-level stuff about following your dreams and not giving up and shit. Um, I think something that we gave were a little bit more like hands-on tips. Like one thing in particular, um, and I don't know if any of the listeners or listeners out there have portfolios for whatever industry you do, but um, something I learned actually not that long ago is that recruiters, when they look at your portfolio, they actually look at the first, oftentimes work at the, look at the first piece of work, which people assume they will, uh, but they also will sometimes go right to the last piece of work because A lot of people will put their work in their book in order from best to worst, thinking that recruiters will go in chronological order. Mm -hmm. And because they know that, they'll actually go to your last piece first to see your worst piece of work. Um, So it's actually kind of good. You said something, what was it, a a work sandwich or something? Yeah, it's like, uh, I I think it's either compliment or Or criticism sandwich. sandwich. Right, so it's kind of like important to sort of, one, you should obviously have all your best work, but make sure that it's like peppered throughout because sometimes they'll they'll do that um, and then another thing I just kind of wrote some a little a little bit more practical advice about like the best ways to reach out to people for networking I think a lot of us you know you kind of have that awkward you know let's meet for coffee type thing which at the end of the day no one wants your a free coffee from a college kid like they can <laughs> afford their three dollar coffee and probably get free coffee at their agency so you kind of skip that song and dance. Um, what I've found that works the best for me is when I reach out asking for something very pointed and lo- like not big. Like I think, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're going to know that you want them to send your resume and that you want a job. So don't ask for that because that just sounds bad. If you go and you reach out, you say something complimentary like, um, came across your LinkedIn profile, big fan of your career, really admirable of the path you've taken, would love mine to mirror that. Um, if you have even just a single piece of advice, what would it be, big or small? And and that doesn't necessarily be have to be how you would reach out, but when you ask for something that doesn't take a lot of time, then they're, they're willing to give more. When you right off the bat say like, hey, can you review my portfolio or look at my resume or do this, and they don't know you at all, they're, they're not going to so it's also good if, if it's a a very specific thing right something they, small and specific yeah yeah there was um I, I think i heard it on tim ferris's podcast and either he did this or he had heard of it but there was um like a, a five question podcast that uh he or whoever it was would just send out to people and it was a very quick questionnaire it would only take them five minutes to answer it but because it was so quick and pointed if people wanted to do it it didn't take much of their time and it was a way to uh, get your foot in the door. Because then it's not just, hey, can you do this for me? It's like, 
it's here, here's this thing that you can now use as like a showcase for what you've done. Right. So, I mean, just in general, it's like if you can ever provide value first before asking for a favor, that's the best thing you can do. If there is really no way for you to provide value before asking for a favor, then ask for the world's tiniest favor. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll offer to give you more. Um, and that's another thing I kind of talked about is like, I don't know the case for all industries, but I think a lot of industries are tough to get into and people that are in them are empathetic to junior level people. And they kind of, they're going to feel bad for you. They're going to want to help. They're, they're going to see themselves in you and people, people are genuinely good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think but, people, people want to be good at the very least. And well, I, once their stuff is taken care of, people yeah. are much like more likely to be philanthropic. Yeah. So people, I think what, what we underestimate is that people will offer to help versus ask them. But like, so we don't have to ask for help as much as we think we do. Do you have people any, will offer. do you have any thoughts on, um, on how to do it digitally more because because like you live in new york so you could more easily say hey let's meet up or you might see someone in person um but a lot of people if I don't know, if you're in middle america or even even me like orlando's not bad right. but i'm not meeting people who well i'm not doing it i'm only doing it digitally like what i just said but you're doing it for people who are in your area right like in new york I mean, not all the time, especially when I was like in Philadelphia looking for jobs anywhere. I would message anyone. And then ask them for coffee or? No, what? I would ask them for exactly what I was just saying. Like, what Oh, you, you went straight into it. Yeah, I never asked them for coffee. I just said, hey, like, you're awesome. Your career mirrors what I hope to have one day. If you had one, one tip that's guided you, big or small, what would it be? And then, you know, sometimes you'll just get people that, like, generic shit that say, like, follow your heart. But then you'll get the people, like, I had someone be like, you know what? Like, you sound like, you know, you've got big goals. Like, send me your, your resume and your cover letter and I'll look it over. And, like, then you, like you said, like I said, like, people then, when you ask for something small, will offer a lot more. I even had a chief creative officer, like a global chief creative officer, respond back. And he gave something a little bit more generic, but he responded. You know, he, which opened up the doors of communication, um, which I don't think otherwise a chief creative officer would have never responded to me. So that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my advice. Like digitally, again, it's kind of the same thing. Ask for something small. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. I need to start doing that more too. Like I, I need to get back into the the LinkedIn space and, and networking more. Like I, I do add to, which yeah. is which is networking, but I, I feel like I'm I'm not doing everything I could. And I, I don't know if that's a, a location thing, if it's because I'm in Orlando, but I live in Altamont and I work near Universal. Well, I think sometimes people underestimate um, the benefit of networking when you don't need a job. And like people don't think about it until they need a job. But you're actually in a way better um, you're in a way better situation when you're not looking because then your intention appears more pure. Like I think, especially if you're in a place where you're like, I'm not a hundred percent sure I love exactly what I do, then you can like you have that privilege of being able to reach out to people that have jobs that seem kind of cool mm -hmm. and just say, hey, like I'd love to just learn about more what about what you do. Yeah. Just say like as I'm. You know, this is this is currently what I'm doing. I'm not really on the search for a new job or anything, but I would just like to learn a little bit, a little bit more. And what you do sounds really cool. Um, but then you're not asking for anyone for a favor. Like you are asking for them to describe their job a little bit, but people love to talk about themselves, so that's not a huge problem. Right. But when you're not, when you're obviously already employed, then you're not looking desperate. You're not looking, and you're not asking them for a job. You're you're really trying to. You don't even know if you're interested in what in their company or what they do. You're actually just trying to learn about it. So you almost put it in a position where they're, I mean, you might even get it to a point where they're trying to sell their company to you. Yeah. Because you never asked. You didn't ask to work there. You don't even know if you want to work there. So I would say even like for someone like you, Josh, like if you have these other like people that have like a web development background but do completely different things it's worth reaching out to them when you're not job hunting and being like hey like what is your job and do you like it yeah and like how did you get there 
Yeah, well, that just means I have to, <laughs> like, fix up my LinkedIn, because I don't think I've touched it in two years, maybe? I don't even know if my current job is on there. Yeah, I mean, I would at least put your current job on there. Oh, I, I need to. I just, I'm not a social media person. Yeah. I never that's have okay. been. That's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is just a way to open the door and start that conversation. Do you write any, uh, any articles for LinkedIn? No. No? Probably should. I feel like that's right up your alley, too. They have, like, LinkedIn features, too, where they feature people and businesses and stuff that I'd like to try and... They just did a feature on Pit My Portfolio, which is one of our partners was making ads with me, so I want to reach out to her and see how that happened. Did... How, how big are they? Like, is it something where they would have been contacted? Maybe. She's had a little bit more... Like, definitely has had more press than, like, we have. Mm -hmm. Um... So I think once like we get a little bit more traction there, then we might be contacted. But she might have also reached out too. And that's the other thing is like, so here's an example. It's like I didn't. I reached out to her recently to ask for advice on like how she got ad week coverage, because oftentimes like you do have to reach out for that. But I only did that after she had reached out to me asking how I got in touch with people at Advertising Week. They're one of our endorsers on our site. But she said she had been trying to reach out to them and hasn't been getting answers. So she reached out to me, I gave her contact information I had, and then I felt kind of like, okay, I provided her value, now I can ask for her, her for favors. Right, it's like so, a tit for tat. Right, so we have that, now we have that sort of open communication, and we're both like young women trying to start this, these um, different ways to support aspiring creatives, and we can help each other out. Um, so it's really nice to like meet people with, with common goals, and make like an open communication and ways you can benefit and help each other. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's that goes for any any type of thing you're starting, finding people that have similar not like the same type of business because obviously then you're competitors, but people that like have a similar type of um, like mentality. Mentality and like audience you're helping. Like she's helping the same audience not and like make ads with me is all for aspiring creatives, but she's helping them in a completely different way. Like she's it's pin my portfolio so she does um, where she she's like a, a square space whiz, so she can help your portfolio look good from a design aesthetic. But she doesn't review it. She doesn't tell you. You know, she doesn't. But whereas we we help you find partners to create the work. So in a way, like we're great partners because you work with make ads with me to find your partner, find briefs, learn what makes a good and a bad portfolio, get that work together, and then you can go to her and be like, okay, I did this, but now make it pretty. Right. Um, so that's what's that's what's great about having partnerships. Is uh is pin my por portfolio just her? Yeah, I think so. Unless I mean, it depends on how how far she, how, how much growth she's she had. But that's one of the crazy things to me about, and I guess it becomes less crazy because it it happens so much more now. But how much you can really do just yourself because of the internet? Oh yeah. And if there's if there's any uh, weird pauses or shaking, it's because I, I'm driving, and uh, there's a lot of braking happening. So just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, there there's so much that you can do just on your own. It's like the uh, the drop shipping stuff. You know, I, did, I told you about my friend Dustin, right? Who yeah. did the he was a digital digital nom digital nomad. Oh, I didn't know. Oh no, I was talking to one of the uh, the ad people. Oh, okay. So when I took that train trip, it was with my friend Dustin. Right. And he was about to travel around the world working remotely the whole time. And one of the things that a lot of those people were doing was running really cheap, like, Facebook ads for, like, uh, China pro products. And right. then marking them up by a, a bunch and then just drop shipping them. And that was how they were making a couple grand a, a, a month to just travel around the world and work off their laptop. That's yeah, and it's like one person, and you don't need a lot. You only need to work maybe. Wait, why doesn't everyone do that? Because not everyone knows about it, and people don't do follow. People don't follow through, too. I really? mean, I, and how did it work? He just got it's a, it's products a, and then sold them for more. Kind of. So he, he Is would. That illegal? No, no, you're drop shipping, and then, I mean it's the same thing as a retailer and a wholesaler. Right. So the the way, and it's been a while, so I could be a little bit off. But he would find uh, a demographic to focus on, do targeted ads for them, and run like 20 different products at $5 each. And then whichever, the top 10, 
you would then run ten dollars each and then the top five do 20 and so on and so forth um and then whenever he found the one that was doing the best just pour money into it and drop ship so you go on um like wish or alibaba uh -huh. and then just because you, you don't have to actually get the product right you know? right you don't have to have an inventory i think the one that he he showed me was one of the biggest markups were uh uh, Disney princess dresses for kids and it would be 10 15 bucks but you could sell it for 120 that's crazy it's, yeah that's why except like you can't really uh, verify the quality though right that's kind of the only part it's like yeah but I, I feel like and like a lot of that time that stuff is such bad quality that I would almost feel bad doing that like up charging for like something that I can almost guarantee is gonna be shitty quality it might be, but that's where most of the stuff is built anyway. Right. And if people are buying it off of, if they're willing to buy it without testing it, then that's that's kind of on them. Yeah. I just feel like ethically, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. I don't think I don't think it's unethical. Why Why do you think it's unethical? They couldn't, why don't they just get it from Wish or Alibaba? Well, the the idea is that they don't they don't know about it. Right. I mean, if you want to go around spreading the word and saying, hey, buy it from here, sure. But by by doing that, I think some people, will, a lot of people trust something off Facebook more than Alibaba. W wish right, which good. sucks though, because it's just like, I think that they, they are under the assumption it's like made in America or something. Or like an American seller. And then they don't think it's like a shitty China product. But they're still getting a shitty China product. Do you? Um, That's why, like, on a lot of Kickstarters and stuff, like, people put, like, an American flag on and say, no, it's actually made in America and you're not just getting tricked. Right. But do, do you think a lot of people still are under that assumption of most products? When I see a product, I immediately assume it's not made here. Yeah, but if it's, there's a difference between not made here and, like, which is, like, I'm fine with products not made here, but, like, I don't know why some products are so shitty from China than some products are. Like, I think when they're, and this is me, like, speaking a little out of my ass, but, like, when they're under, like, the guidance of, like, a company that has a standard for their product, right. then they're going to be made well. But if it's just, like, random products being churned out and not having, like, a standard for them, then they're just going to have, like, deceitful pictures that make them look good. And then, you know, you see all those blogs where people say, like, I ordered this sweater from China and this is what I got. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like if I'm selling a product and I'm putting money and I'm charging someone for it and I can't verify the quality of it, like, I just don't think I, that's something I could ethically do. Yeah, I, I can get that. Like, and then, like, who is he running? Is Does he have, like, a business? Like, he has a business name that he's selling the products for? Yeah, yeah. He would, he would set up a, a, uh, Shopify store, right? And then just have very focused. And did he get like really bad reviews? No, the products were decent. Yeah, maybe there's a way to like, maybe that's that's part of it. Maybe you make sure like the quality, the, the products good. that you sell. Like I would maybe at least like order one of each. Well, it doesn't well it doesn't Alibaba have reviews as well? It's similar to Amazon, isn't it? Yeah, Alibaba. That one's really good. Wish is really bad. Yeah, <laughs> Wish is is risky. Right, but that one's good. Like, I have Lululemon leggings that are great from there. Oh, you can get that, like, name brand stuff, too? Yeah. They call them Lululimes. <laughs> are they green? No, but I just figured an off-brand Lululemon would be a Lululemon. How, how many times have you washed them? A fair amount. Why? Okay. No, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, they're I know how you great. are with washing clothes. I wash clothes often. Why do you think I'm this dirty scumbag? <laughs> because you told me you are. I never told you I don't wash my clothes. No, just when there's dog hair in it. Well, that wasn't my fault. I stayed in an apartment with dog hair the other day. Well, maybe you need to get that lint roller that the Sham Wow guy did. Have you seen that? No. It's like a silicone rubber one. I don't. It's not important, but. No. I'm hungry. I guess I should get over there. Wait, what'd you say? You're hungry? hungry? Yeah. I'm always hungry. Yeah. I'm starving. What do you want to get? I don't know. We I wish are... this was like a live thing where we could be like, guys, what should we get? And then like. I guess like a Facebook Live where people can comment. They, uh, that's something I'd love to do. A Facebook Live? Yeah, you should definitely. But like, it. like a consistent type thing. I mean, I, I guess I could, but I need someone to, to riff off of. Yeah. But what do you want to get for food? Oh, I gotta get up here. Shit. Oh. We are about 
18 minutes from Brittany's house. Oh shit. Well, we're close. Yeah, we're not far at all. Okay. I mean, I can probably eat when I'm there. That's not gonna help you though. Yeah, but I have food in my place. I have salmon that I Are made. We, wait, we're digressing. We're still on the on podcast. Yeah, but that's what this is. This is just a... Okay, so I've explained this, I don't know if on the podcast, but for me, this is just a way for me to document my life. Right. I don't... Like, if we go off topic a little bit, whatever, it's fine. I just want to... Now I have this this encapsulated moment of right. the first time that we did a, a, a co-talk True. at a college. I do think, though, before we close, I just want to reiterate exactly what make ads with me is because I don't think I did a great job explaining I'm still working on the elevator pitch but what it is is especially in the advertising industry if any people are listening that are in the advertising industry and a creative it's really really hard to make a portfolio and you need a partner it's generally for the most part an art director and a copywriter they make work together what our site does it's basically a database of creatives you can search for someone to, to make work with it's called spec work. So when you're making a first portfolio, because you haven't worked on real brands, um, you, like people want you to have experience and you're like, how the heck do I put work in my portfolio if I've never worked on any brand? The answer is you make fake work and that's okay. You're allowed to make fake work for real brands. So you find a partner on our site, you use our resources to kind of learn what makes a good piece of work, what makes a bad piece of work. And then you make your, your portfolio. We also have uh, members get discounts to different things like portfolio, posting sites, and headshots, and other other types of things. We've got a bunch of discounts for our members, and we also have a bunch of mentors, which is basically which is a ton of people in our networks um, from a range of verticals, range of experience levels that have offered up their emails to give advice to any aspiring creatives that want to email them, which is kind of what we were talking about before. It takes that barrier to entry. Um, down and makes it a little less like you don't have to offer to buy them a cup of coffee they're already volunteering to give you advice so that's something we wanted to offer our members so yeah. I just wanted to make sure all that came across as clearly as possible before we signed off yeah and shameless I, plug I mean this whole Not thing so is basically shameless a shameless plug, plug. but, but I, I think the the mentor thing is really good too because I I know that I have had issues when it's like I almost feel guilty cold calling people yeah and it's kind of like, um, I, I hope this is a decent comparison, but it's like Tinder or any of the dating sites because it's, okay, you've already established that you both are interested in the right, same thing. Right, right, yeah. So it's, it, it's almost like you have a reason then right. to talk. It's like, it's not weird if you're like, hey, I found you on Make Ads With Me. They'll be like, oh, great, because I put myself on Make Ads With Me. So that mm -hmm. makes sense that you found me. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's so not like, like, oh, you creep for emailing me because I put my email publicly for people to email me. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's helpful. Found your number in the phone book. Right. Do they still print phone books? I have no idea. Hmm. Well, <laughs> put it down in the comments if they still make phone books because <laughs> I don't think they, I think they, no, they can't. Well, they need something for bodybuilders to rip in half. Oh, you're, well, license plates now. Oh, true. All right. Well, well that note. <laughs> All right, so we'll sign off now, uh, and then we're going to get some food. Comment down below what you think we got for food, or don't. I don't really care. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, and I love you all. Bye. Bye.